the first thing we are going to do is we're going to jack up the car. Not all the way, but enough so we can get it started and we're gonna break the lug nuts on the tire. Because when you raise up the tire, the back tire will spin. Once the lug nuts are broken, we're gonna continue to raise up the car. Once I have the car off the ground, I already had the lug nuts broken. Now I just take my power tool and take the lug nuts off. Now with all of the lug nuts off, I can remove the tire. Don't know if you're familiar with the purposes of the tire once you take it off, but it makes a good seat. Okay, so here I am taking the caliper screw off of the brake caliper so I can remove the caliper to get to the brakes. Also, you may want to use something to hold the inside screw so you can loosen the screw that is holding the caliper on. Okay, now that I have both of the screws out, I can pull the brake pads off. Now these brake pads have a extra piece on it that squeezes it pretty close or pretty tight in the caliper. So I have to kind of jiggle it out. Once I get it out, I compare the two brake pads and now I start to apply the new brake pads. Um, the brake grease is not necessary. Um, it does help slide with the sliding of the pads and stuff like that, but it's not mandatory. Now, if you never worked on the rear pads of a Mazda, do not pinch the boot around the piston. It has this funny shaped thing to it, but um the way you get the uh push this piston in on this on this caliper is you have to apply pressure to it so what i use to push in the caliper on the front is this little tool i'm using that same tool to push that caliper in and you got to twist to keep it tight and you got to use uh, I think they make a tool but I don't have the tool so I'm using just a pair of channel locks to um, press down and then turn it to kind of get that caliper to go now in. Now that I have pushed this piston in now I am going to put the brake caliper back on 